Nathan, so why do people buy the Chevy Volt? Is it because it's fuel efficient? Eh. Is it because it's futuristic and good looking? Eh. Or is it because they can get in the HOV lanes yeah, in, that's why. in California? Yep, yep, absolutely. Well, actually, there are a couple other reasons, and you also get to shove this under people's noses and say, look what I got. But what's really important here is to ask yourself the question, is this worth nearly $40,000, which is its as-tested price? Yeah, but there are a lot of federal and state rebates. But for now, let's just test it on the track and see how fast it does from zero to 60. All right, here are the two important numbers, 179 and 273. That's the horsepower and more importantly, the torque. Now, the way that the Volt works is relatively simple. You have a power plant, which is powered by petroleum and you have an electric motor. And really all the power plant does is charge the batteries, which then drive the electric motor, which then drive the front wheels through a CVT. It's pretty straightforward. The most important thing you have to know about this car is that it can go on EV or electric vehicle range for about, give or take, 30 to 40 miles before it switches over to the petroleum power plant. Basically an electric car, so I can't rev it anyway, right? Here we go. You can hear the engine kick on because when it's needed, it'll be able to add a little bit of boost. Nine point two zero. That's not bad. Oi! I haven't had my coffee yet. Sorry, guys. Yeah, nine point two zero. Nine point two zero. It is. It's not a sports car, people. But you know what? <laughs> Actually, it moves pretty good. How often have you heard this, General Motors has a better interior than Toyota and Nissan? Well, they do, at least in this car. Compared to the hybrids that those automakers build and the Nissan Leaf, this is a much nicer interior. It's got quality, it's got good feel to it. Everything works well. Unfortunately, there are no power seats, and unfortunately, the speakers are a little tinny for my taste. But all in all, in terms of the technology and everything, the way it's laid out, it's a mighty interesting interior. So here's the thing about the Volt. Nathan lives 53 miles from this racetrack, so he effectively ran it out of electricity. So now it works like a hybrid in that the petroleum engine is basically charging the battery and powering the wheels for all of our testing. But that doesn't mean that most people have to drive it in that mode. In fact, you could own this car and drive it your entire life without ever using petroleum because you could go home, charge it up, drive your 40 miles, charge it up, drive your 40 miles, and never actually have the electric power plant use the petroleum motor to charge up the batteries. Now, the exterior, well, you're not going to mistake the Volt for anything else. Even though it is built on the Chevy Cruze platform, it doesn't look anything like it. There are some panel gaps, I especially noticed it here with the hood, but I mean, how often are you going to be lifting the hood, right? So um, at least you don't have to look at that too terribly often. It kind of reminds me of a retro futuristic vehicle from the 90s, you know, like some of those movies like Demolition Man. That's what it looks like it belongs in. A lot of beeping in this thing. A lot of beeping. And Nathan was kind enough to leave it in sport mode for me. So, uh, once again, first time in the car. Keep in mind, the car that's somewhat kind of similar to this that we tested was the Mazda 6, which went, I believe, uh, 117. All right, Nathan. Oh, my other window's open. A lot of noise. I want people to hear what I'm saying. Yep. All right. Front wheel drive, so we're going to get a little bit of understeer. Really fast accelerating. Oh, <laughs> those tires are certainly meant more for rolling less resistance 
and holding a racetrack, but it's not bad, you know. There's, of course, a lot of weight. There's a T-shaped battery. There's the understeer that runs right through the middle of this car, which uh, I'm suspecting is actually not bad for weight distribution, but those front wheels are really struggling for grip. Uh, it's weird because it's so quiet. Even with the uh, power plant running, it's a very quiet car. Oh, cook that, overcook that. But uh, yeah, it's really plowing, really pushing. Uh, regenerative brakes, which of course aren't the best for track work. They don't have exactly precise pedal feel. And of course there's the issue with the fact that this has a CVT. But you know what? Uh, it's better than I expected. It, uh, for an electric car, or at least an electric hybrid, it's not bad. All right, and here is the straightaway. I took that kind of easy just because, well, there's so much plow there. There we have it. Whoa, those brakes, those brakes just grabbed. Expected to see wheels flying and dust. Andre, huh. one, one eighteen seventeen. Oh. One minute, 18 seconds, basically. That's really good. That's for, for you know, basically an electric car with a lot of weight in the nose. Uh, I believe the Mazda was about 115, the Mazda 6. And just for perspective, uh, I think the Volkswagen Jetta, which had that new turbocharged engine, was 115. So here we go, let's find out what the word is from Nathan. One minute, 18 seconds. 118. There you go, which is about right. Yeah, yeah, yeah it's, it's not bad. Good. It's not bad. Yeah, it's it smells right. like rubber, too. <laughs> it does smell like rubber. something new today let's rank the car based on its segment okay and it's kind of a funky segment i would say the leaf yeah and the prius plug-in and this car of course yeah pretty much so out of those three where would this car fall in your opinion mechanically speaking this is the best car so i'd say it's on top but my one problem the back seat so not enough room i would also say it's the number one car in that segment so if i were to rank it i would go volt yeah prius leaf i'd say volt leaf prius so, do you guys like this new ranking system? Do you like it better than buy it, lease it, rent it, or forget it? If so, let us know where, Nathan. Well, on the comments below, but also go to tflcar.com and you can give us some comments there. As always, this is Roman. And Nathan. Thanks for watching, and remember, subscribe for a new car video. Every day. Ciao.